On this episode, we're going to be talking about Vansar gangs and their Cybertechnica and tactics cards. Dome Runners TV, your guide to the Underhive and beyond. Hey there, scabby scummers and gangers. Crimson Oracle here with another episode of Dome Runners TV. Next in my intro to Necromunda series, we are talking Vansar. And I wanted to get into kind of what the Vansar gang's main gimmick is and uh, talk about all their tactics cards. So uh, this one is going to be a relatively straightforward episode. Uh, I'll probably be doing a the building a Vansar gang for one or two boxes next. Uh, and yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy first year uh, of doing this channel. I'm really excited to see what 2023 brings us. I did want to say happy holidays to everyone who celebrates. Uh, it's a fun time of year for people who like to play with toys because there tends to be uh, a lot of fun stuff out there. And well, you know, who likes to play with toys more than war gamers? Pretty much nobody. So uh, this is pretty much our time of year. Um, and I, of course, did want to say thank you to everyone who has supported the channel, subscribed, uh, liked the videos, left comments. I'd love to hear everyone's thoughts on all of my opinions about the Vansar Cybertechnica and how you might use them uh, when we get into that in this video. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump straight into it and uh, talk House Vansar. If you enjoy the show, don't forget to like and subscribe. And for as little as $2 a month, you can help keep this show on the air at patreon.com slash dome runners. House Vansar's main gimmick, aside from their high quality gear and high ballistic skill, is the Archeos Cyber Technica system. Uh, this is a bunch of upgrades that work just like Augmentics because they are essentially really high-end augmentics. They can be purchased at gang creation when a fighter takes an injury or when a fighter makes an advancement. So if you want to use them, uh, you're going to have to be thinking about when you give them to the fighter. Uh, but of course, that is you know down to how you're building your gang. Uh, and we'll get into the details of each one uh, as we go. These can be upgraded, which is a nice uh, way to kind of gradually increase the quality of your fighters. Uh, these are meant to represent the failing bodies of the Vansar being patched up with technology from their STC, which is ironically causing their bodies to fail. And only one Cybertechnica can be taken per location. So that won't really matter that much because as you'll see, the benefits uh, of the previous ones are incorporated into each upgrade, so you would have no reason to want more than one. Now, these are permanent upgrades. Unsurprisingly, they are essentially integrated into your fighter's body. Uh, they can be used to replace any existing bionics. So if you happen to be importing a gang from before you were playing with this book, uh, you can do that. I'm not sure why you would buy bionics for a Vansar fighter uh, when they have access to these, because I, I believe that they're usually cheaper than the actual bionics that don't do much. Um, each upgrade comes in alpha, gamma, and omega forms, representing increasingly advanced technology. And each Cybertechnica can be upgraded by paying the cost difference between the existing and the upgrade. Uh, the fighter still goes into recovery, but that is huge because it means that you can very gradually get your fighters up and up and up into the stratosphere in terms of the technology that they have access to. So definitely don't sleep on upgrading your Cybertechnica. Now, of course, like other augments, Cybertechnica can be damaged. When you take a lasting injury roll to a location that has Cybertechnica, you roll a d6. On a 4-up, the injury is ignored, which is some extra protection from lasting injuries. But otherwise, the upgrade is damaged and its benefits cannot be used. No further injury is inflicted. It can be repaired for half of the initial cost, which is a pretty good deal. The cranial Cybertechnica is of course meant to repair injuries to the head. So the damage it repaired is from head injuries and humiliated results, and it can be damaged by head injuries and humiliated results. 
So the Cranial Cybertechnica is admittedly not one of the most standout options. Uh, at the first level, it grants immunity to the insane condition, which while something that occasionally will come up is not the most common of uh, effects in the game. So it's not something that you really are going to use a lot unless you happen to be facing a lot of chaos opponents. I guess sometimes the lack will spec into a route that goes with a lot of insane stuff, but it's pretty unusual. For another 10 credits, you get immunity to the insane and intoxicated conditions, which is actually pretty fun because it allows you to access some of the, you know, various drugs that a gang can access without having to deal with any of the consequences. And really, that's always fun. Uh, and finally, for 75 credits, you can get the Omega version, which of course stacks with the immunity to insane and intoxicated, but it also means the fighter can never become broken, which is huge because well, you're going to get shot at and fighters are going to break. It just happens. So unless you're, you know, running everyone kind of spread out and fanned out, you want your fighters to be, you know, less likely to break or in this case, completely impossible to break. So worth considering. Overall, I would say that this category is more something that you'll see people use to repair injuries than something that they're going to put a lot of credits into, just because 75 credits is a pretty big expense uh, to mitigate the psychology of the fighter. It is not something you're necessarily going to want to spend all that money on. Next up, we have Ocular Cybertechnica, an important one for your shooting-based gang. It repairs damage from eye injury results, and it can be damaged by subsequent eye injury results on the injury table. At the alpha level, for 50 credits, your ranged weapons all count as having an infrasight. The infrasight is a really cool upgrade. It allows a weapon to shoot through smoke and counts models as being minus one to their uh, whatever advantage they're getting from cover uh, for the, the hit roll. Now, it says that it cannot be applied to rapid fire and blast weapons, but since this is not applying the infrasight to the weapon, instead it is counting as having it, I believe this would benefit even rapid fire and blast weapons. Now, for gamma, it counts as having a infrasight and a monocyte for only 85 credits. The monocyte is another cool upgrade. It gives plus two to hit when you are aiming rather than just plus one. And of course, for 105 credits, the Omega upgrade counts all weapons as having infrasight, monocyte, and the model is having photo goggles, which allow you to shoot through smoke. Obviously, that's not needed because of the infrasight, but that also allows you to shoot up to 12 inches in pitch black missions. And it gives you a bonus to your uh, initiative for flash tests, which is actually pretty nifty because Vansar have terrible initiative. This is hands down one of the best upgrades in the game, honestly. Uh, it's expensive, and uh, I don't think you'll see many people buying Omega from the outset, uh, especially because photo goggles themselves, uh, well, the main benefit is, you know, partially mitigated by having the infrasight already. Um, I mean, being able to shoot in pitch black missions is great, but it doesn't happen that often. And it really depends on whether your opponent has a lot of flash weapons or you're playing in the ash waste, whether that benefit comes into effect much at all. But these are seriously the kind of upgrades that will make a fighter an absolute monster uh, with a shooting weapon. And Vansar already have great ballistic skills. So I can definitely see this being a major upgrade for your events are. Next up, we have Syndextra Cybertechnica. These are for repairing hand injury results and can be damaged by hand injury results. At the alpha level, for 50 credits, you ignore the effects of the disarm trait. At the gamma level, for 75 credits, you ignore the effects of the disarm trait and you ignore the minus one to hit for turning to face your opponent. And at the Omega level, for a whopping 125 credits, you ignore the effect of the disarm trait, the minus one for turning, and your attacks cannot be parried. So this is a set of very good upgrades that are just a little bit too close combat focused for most Vansar gangs, uh, which is not to say that no Vansar gangs will ever take these. First of all, being able to repair a hand injury can be very important. So that in of itself is a very useful upgrade. But the fact that uh, some Vansar fighters are going to run shock staves and put a lot of experience points into increasing weapon skill, uh, the 
option to avoid being disarmed and to not have to worry about uh, getting charged and taking that minus one to turn and face your opponent is definitely worth some amount of credits. But these feel a little bit expensive. And while 125 credits to completely ignore being parried is cool, it is very pricey. And it really depends on if you are getting parried a lot, whether you, you're actually going to even have any interest in using that particular upgrade. So this one's more situational. Next up, we have Motive Cybertechnica. These repair damage from the hobbled injury results. So obviously it's leg replacements and they can be damaged by hobbled injury results. So the alpha level of Motive gives ignore movement penalties from difficult terrain. The gamma level at 65 credits ignores movement penalties from difficult terrain and gives you plus two to movement when climbing. And the omega level ignores movement penalties from difficult terrain, plus two to movement when climbing, and reroll initiative checks for falling, all for 100 credits. So this one I think is actually one that you can get a lot of use out of, particularly the alpha level. Uh, now it depends on whether your group uses a lot of difficult terrain, but especially once you get into the ash waste and you're rolling to see if the board has difficult terrain across the whole board, it is really, really useful just to be able to ignore that rule and not have to worry about a fighter being slowed by it. Uh, vents are also very slow, so the plus two when climbing is very nifty, uh, even if that only works out to actually being technically plus one if you're not using a ladder. Um, but overall, these are expensive. I wouldn't necessarily go for the third one, even though Vansar falling from initiative checks is a serious issue just because of how much it costs. Um, but I would definitely look into purchasing the lowest level for a lot of your fighters. Torsonic Cybertechnica repairs damage from spinal injury results, and it can be damaged by injuries to the spine. So for alpha level 50 credits, unarmed attacks become damage three instead of damage one, which is pretty impressive. Uh, for the gamma level, 75 credits, unarmed attacks become damage three, and you get plus two strength for melee and versatile attacks. And for 150 credits at the omega level, unarmed attacks are three damage. You get plus two strength for melee and versatile attacks, and all weapons carried by the fighter count as having suspensers. So this is an expensive upgrade, and obviously it's more expensive than the 60 credit suspenser upgrade, but suspensers only affect one weapon. So going for the full 150 credits, you can really create an absolute powerhouse, someone who can slaughter anyone in close combat while also rocking a heavy weapon. Uh, I don't necessarily personally go for this all eggs in one basket kind of approach to building fighters, um, but I do think that just at the basic level, this one is not going to be as popular as some of the others just because it's based around a lot of combat stuff and Vansar fighters are not exactly rushing into combat all that often. And of course, uh, getting, you know, d damage three on your uh, melee attacks is fun, but why would a fighter who you're putting this many credits into be making unarmed attacks in the first place? Uh, so it's situational, um, but I do think that it would be a fun way to make a fighter with a massive, unwieldy, close combat weapon absolutely hellishly dangerous. Next up, we have Vascular Cybertechnica. These repair damage from the enfeebled injury result and can be damaged by the enfeebled injury result. So for 40 credits, you get plus one toughness when it comes to flesh wounds taking your fighter out of action. For 80 credits, you get that same plus one toughness for being taken out of action by flesh wounds. And you also get to reroll any toughness checks. And then for 130 credits, you get plus one toughness for going out of action from flesh wounds, reroll toughness checks, and you may discard a flesh wound in the end phase. So this one is pricey, uh, but first of all, you're going to want it if you take a injury from, that reduces your toughness because fighters losing toughness is absolutely terrible for them, uh, makes them much easier to kill. Uh, and then uh, the fact that you could potentially be, you know, a healing up, uh, self-healing monster really is a fun uh, way to kind of turn a, a fighter that you've invested a lot into, into someone who's much harder to kill. 
it's expensive, but I think that, you know, when you're sort of getting towards the end game and you're deciding where to put your credits, uh, this is one that definitely would be worth considering for your higher end fighters, your leaders and champions, just to keep them on the table as long as possible and get the most out of that heavy credit investment. Now that is the end of the Cyber Technica upgrades. As you can see, they offer a lot to fighters. So now we are going to talk about the various tactics cards that Vansar has access to. First, we have Long Shot. Play when a friendly Vansar fighter makes a shoot basic action. Their ballistic skill counts as plus two for the duration of the attack. It ignores all modifiers to hit and the weapon then automatically goes out of ammo. This is a great one if your opponent is ducking someone very difficult to hit behind a lot of cover and you really, really want to make sure that you hit them. It's particularly good if you're putting it onto a weapon that has a very good ammo roll since you're definitely going to have to make the ammo roll after the weapon goes out of ammunition. Next up, we have Power Up. Play when a friendly Vansar makes an attack with a Laz weapon. The weapon counts as double strength for this attack. So at first glance, this is a really good upgrade, but when you think about the benefits of the Hot Shot pack, you could potentially have a fighter firing a LAS weapon with strength eight, which means that you can actually be wounding like the rear armor on a cargo eight ridge hauler uh, on a four up, which is crazy. Uh, it's almost a LAS cannon. I mean, this is great. I, you know, don't sleep on this one. Of course, you can only use it once, so be strategic about where you apply it, but it's a great way to put down a particularly tough fighter. Ablative Mesh. Play when a fighter is hit by a weapon with a strength value. Count the fighter as being hit by a weapon with the knockback trait, but the hit itself has no other effect. So this is another nifty one. Uh, you're going to want to use it against a weapon that you think is really going to do some damage. Uh, but being able to ignore a successful hit can be absolutely devastating to your opponent if they are using high strength uh, weapons that don't have a lot of shots. Ammo dump. Play at deployment before models are placed. Place an additional ammo crate on the board. Any fighter within three inches that activates can make a free reload simple action, including for single shot and scarce weapons. So obviously this is great. Vansar wind up using a lot of plasma. Plasma is scarce. Being able to put a weapons cache down that anyone can reload their plasma gun on is really nifty. Just be careful about where you put it because your opponent can use it as well because it definitely works for any fighter, not just Vansar fighters. Bodyguard, play at deployment before placing models. One fighter with the Gang Fighter X rule that isn't part of the starting crew may be nominated. Choose a leader or champion. The nominated model is treated as following the rules for exotic beasts as if owned by that leader or champion. So this one is situational. If you draw it, you're definitely going to want to use it. Uh, I would only take it as a chosen choice if you happen to be in a match that has a very limited number of fighters, uh, because the pet rules actually can be a little bit punishing in terms of uh, what you are able to do with the, you know, the model that's the exotic beast or the pet, if you will. So uh, it's fun because, you know, being able to take an extra fighter is really nifty. My friend who used to run a Vansar champion with inspiring presence and multiple cyber acnids would occasionally use this. So he would just have a absolute blob of you know, as many activations as humanly possible in a single round. And that was always, uh, well, you know, fun in the sense that he got to really, you know, have the craziest uh, action economy in the game. Defensive protocols. Play when a leader or champion is hit by a ranged attack before it is resolved. You may transfer the hit to a fighter with the Gang Fighter X rule within two inches. So this is basically the classic lookout, sir, from Warhammer 40k. Uh, you get to force one of your mooks to take a shot for one of your important people. Uh, it's useful. Definitely take it. You know, I generally run at least one gang fighter with each of my champions and leader. So if you are in that situation, it's kind of a no brainer. Enhanced Cyber Technica. Play at deployment before placing any models. Any fighters with Cyber Technica count as being one level higher. 
So this is great. I mean, just on its face, it's a really great upgrade. You are able to take your model, all of your models who have Cybertechnica, and, you know, essentially count as having spent significantly more credits on their upgrades. Uh, it is obviously something that's going to increase in value the more Cybertechnica you have put into your gang. So towards the end of the campaign, I could definitely see taking this card a lot if you are able to choose which cards you're running. Shut in. If you're the defender, play during priority phase after priority roll. If you're not the defender, discard and redraw. All doors on the battlefield immediately close. All doors become locked. Those without a terminal must be forced open. If the board has less than three doors, you can mis discard and redraw. So this is a, you know, really situational card. Of course, it's built into the card that you might be redrawing it. But it is awesome if you find yourself, you know, having someone coming through your, your base in the Underhive, in the Zone Retalis game, and there's a lot of doors. Being able to slam all the doors is awesome, particularly if people are standing in doorways since they can get crushed by the door. I, I think it's great for what it is. Arachne Ropes. Play after deployment before first turn. D6 friendly fighters can be equipped with grav shoots. I mean... Free grab shoots. What you know? What's to what's to complain about? Uh, falling is a problem for Vansar fighters. Grab shoots help deal with that. It's a great great card. Rad clouds play after deployment before the first round. Place D three markers more than six inches from enemy fighters. Any non Vansar fighter that ends activation within three inches rolls a D six. On a five up, they take a flesh wound. Roll a D six each end phase. On a one, the marker is removed. So this is very useful. The fact that it affects your enemies and allies, but not Vansar is awesome because it means that you can create areas where your opponent does not want to go, which you can still run through. It's really, really nifty on sort of the tighter zone mortalis boards where you can place those clouds in ways that really clog up where your opponent can go and redirect them into the places that you want them. But uh, it's useful in any board, really, because it just allows you to throw your opponent's plan off by, you know, mixing it up after they've deployed, before they have the opportunity to, you know, actually do anything. Data mining. Play after deployment before the first round. Your opponent must reveal all unplayed tactics cards. Choose one for them to discard and randomly replace. OK, this is just great. I mean, if you have an opponent who, you know, leans into certain tactics cards, you get the opportunity to see if they have them and potentially throw them off. I, you know, this is the kind of thing that is very uh, kind of affects how much how useful it is, is affected by how much your opponents rely on their tactics cards. For my Cawdor, I don't use them very often. Tactics cards come up occasionally, but they are not that important based off of the cards that I have access to. But for someone, you know, who, for example, is using out of gas all the time on your uh, on your vehicles, it can be really, really helpful to take that out of their hand. Medical intervention. Play in the end phase before making a recovery test. Select a friendly Vansar fighter. They do not make a recovery test. Instead, they count as having rolled the flesh wound result. OK, so this one is awesome. Uh, being able to ensure that someone comes back really helps you to not have to sit there rolling and rolling and rolling turn after turn. Getting them back in the fight is great, particularly if that fighter has something that prevents them from going out of action quickly. Uh, you know, maybe that augmentic that the last one count as having higher toughness. Uh, you know, it's a good card. Weakened physiology. Play in the end phase before making recovery tests. Choose a seriously injured fighter from the other gang. They must roll two injury dice and you choose the one to discard. Again, uh, just as it's great to have the opportunity to not have to make a lot of injury rolls, the ability to force your opponent to have to roll double flesh wounds in order to get the flesh wound result that they want is hilarious. So this one can really mess with your opponent if you play it on the right fighter at the right time, especially because it increases the odds they go out of action by double. Security override. 
If you're the attacker, play after priority roll before readying fighters. If you're not the attacker, discard and redraw. All doors on the battlefield immediately open. All locked doors become unlocked. All door terminals cease to function. And if there are less than three doors, you can discard and redraw. So the opposite of the previous door card, this one allows you to hack into an opponent's base and open all the doors, which is hysterical. The fact that they then can't lock them later I mean, it's just icing on the cake. This is a great one if you happen to be playing Zone Mortalis missions that use a lot of doors. Of course, the fact that it, it's really situational is built into the card, allowing you to discard if you don't need it. Tracer Fire. Play after rolling for priority, but before readying fighters. Any fighter who's part of a group activation may apply plus one to hit for shoot basic and shoot double actions. If you use a lot of group activations, this is huge. The fact that you could potentially have half your gang or more having plus one to hit for all of their shooting attacks because your group activating them is perfect. Uh, I really don't have any, you know, complaints or downsides on this one. It's just a really useful card. Thane Nobility. Play at deployment before placing models. Include a house agent or dramatis personae for the battle. They don't count towards the maximum crew size. And if you don't have the model, you can discard and select another. However, if they're taken out of action, you get a minus two modifier to cool checks for the remainder of the battle, and your gang loses five rep, and the gang that took them out of action gains three rep. So this one is a little bit of a gamble, but the house agents and dramatis personae are uh, something that you're not necessarily going to see on the battlefield a lot without the use of this tactics card. So I definitely think it's a fun way to use models in your collection that you wouldn't be using that often. For example, I have used it uh, to bring Strix onto the battlefield because I made a model for Strix, uh, but I don't have that many opportunities to pay the hiring fee for Strix. So uh, it is a big downside if you happen to get that fighter killed. The minus two to cool checks means that your opponent is potentially going to be uh, taking some serious uh, damage to, you know, if they happen to bottle or if they're near someone who goes down, they are going to be breaking much easier. And the fact that you lose a ton of rep does mean that if you have a lot of hangers on and you're leaning into a high rep or trying to win the most rep, uh, triumph at the end of the campaign, this one has some liabilities. Unexpected allies. Play at deployment before placing models. Recruit and deploy up to three subtechs with LAS gun or two LAS pistols. They do not count towards starting crew size. If you don't have the models, you can discard and redraw. So Vansar having access to two different options to recruit additional fighters at the start of the game is really nifty. And this one is really, really good because your Jews have access to LAS guns, which means that even though they have kind of a crappy ballistic skill, and aren't generally that useful, they can stay out at range and be support fighters just adding to your weight of fire. Uh, I definitely would use this uh, as often as possible without sort of uh, upsetting your opponents because it can be a little bit annoying when your opponent is constantly bringing extra fighters uh, just because it slows the games down a bit. Weapon Drill. Play after deployment but before first turn. Reroll all natural ones on ammo checks for the duration of the game. Simple benefit, and it is obviously useful on its face. You are a shooting gang when you're playing Vansar, and you're going to be rolling a lot of ammo dice, which means ammo checks are going to happen. Uh, the reroll ones means that you're almost never going to go out of ammo on your LAS guns, since they have a two-up ammo roll, and it can really save you when you are rolling on plasma to reroll some of those results. And that just about covers all of House Vansar's stuff. Uh, yeah, they are a good gang and they happen to have one of the best systems for, uh, you know, bonuses. And they also have some of the best tactics cards. Vansar just are, you know, they're playing with a, <laughs> a good hand, so to speak. Uh, so I uh, hope to delve into a little bit more about how to build a Vansar gang in the next video. Uh, and yeah, we look forward to seeing you then, um, probably in uh, 2023. Uh, although I might do a recap and planning for the future kind of video, maybe a battle report uh, before the end of the year is out.
Thanks, as always, to my patrons. You all make this show possible. And I really thank you so much, especially at this festive time of year. Uh, I really am glad that I'm able to be working on this project and this channel so much. Uh, and it's really because of your support. And of course, you too can become a patron for as little as $2 a month. Join the show's Discord, get access to early content sometimes, and of course, help keep this stuff coming. Patreon.com slash Dome Runners. And don't forget to check out the podcast, Dome Runners, on Buzzsprout. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts. I'm probably there, and if I'm not, shoot me an email, and I will be there. Uh, this is, uh, it's been a little bit slow on the podcast front just because I've been putting so much time into video production, but there is a brand new Christmas special dropping tomorrow, so check that out. As always, everybody out there, please have a wonderful holidays, stay safe, and do not forget to change your paint water.